came across this interesting research work from Sakana AI. So this talks about continuous thought machines. So the idea over here is that neurons in brains use timing and synchronization in the way that they compute. This property seems essential for the flexibility and adaptability of biological intelligence. Modern AI systems discard this fundamental property in favor of efficiency and simplicity. So they are bridging this gap between existing powerful implementation and scalability of modern AI and the biological plausibility paradigm where neuron timing matters. So this is what is your continuous thought machine. It is a new type of neural network that uses synchronization of neural activity over time as its representation for taking actions in a world. Okay. So they have this demo over here, which runs a real continuous thought machine in the browser. So you can run this particular thing. For example, you have this as a source and this as target. And when you run it, you know, it does all these internal calculations, basically this neural network, and then it tries to find this path. If you see over here, it is not able to do it. Sometimes it's not able to do it. That's what they're saying over here. But sometimes it is able to solve this problem. So you can see how it builds this particular route and how this particular neuron synchronize. Okay, that is the activity which is shown over here. So what is the key feature over here in this continuous thought machine? So human brains, in the human brain or in animal brains or whatever, the neurons don't fire randomly. Instead, they synchronize their firing, meaning electrical activity is coordinated. This synchronization is crucial for various cognitive processes, including learning, memory, and attention. It allows the brain to integrate information from different regions and perform complex computations. So there is a synchronized firing and then there is a timing. Okay. So neural synchronization refers to coordinated firing of multiple neurons where their action potentials occur at the same time or with a specific consistent timing. So this feature is not present in your current neural networks. Neural networks were originally inspired by biological brains, but they remain significantly distinct from their biological counterparts. Brains demonstrate complex neural dynamics that evolve over time, but our modern neural networks, they abstract away such temporal dynamics in order to facilitate large scale deep learning. Okay. So the activations of standard neural networks can be seen as intentional abstraction of a neuron firing rate replacing the temporal dynamics of biological process with a single static value. So this has enabled significant advancements in large scale machine learning, but then it is also resulted in a departure from the fundamental principles that govern biological neural computation. So evolution of biological brains has over million years has resulted with rich neural dynamics includes spike timing dependent plasticity and neuronal oscillation. So this spike timing dependent plasticity is what I'm talking uh, what is present over here, which is essential for cognitive process such as learning memory and attention. Okay. So this is what they are trying to create over here with this continuous thought machine, which is a novel neural network architecture designed to explicitly incorporate neural timing as a foundational element. So they are introducing something called as a decoupled internal dimension, a novel approach to modeling the temporal evolution of neural activity. So this uh, so they view this dimension as that over which thought can unfold in an artificial neural system. They also have something called as neuron level models where every neuron has its own internal weights that process a history of incoming signals pre-activation as opposed to a static ray loop. Okay. And they use something called as neural synchronization directly as the latent representation with which the CTM observes through an attention query and predicts. This biologically inspired design choice puts forward neural activity as the crucial element for any manifestation of intelligence the CTM might demonstrate. So how does this work? Okay. So there is this particular video over here. Before going to the video, they have this neural uh, architecture over here of the continuous thought machines. Okay. So first is something called synapse model. So this is the weights depicted is blue lines. Okay. So this models the cross neuron in, uh, interactions to produce pre activation. So these pre activations are continuous. Okay. So for each neuron, 
history of pre-activation is kept which is what you get this waveform so these are pre-activations history okay the most recent of which is used okay by the neuron level models which are weights depicted in red lines to produce post activations okay so you have post activations which are produced now a history of post activations okay again this waveform a history of post activations is also kept and it is used to compute something called as a synchronization matrix so neuron pairs are selected from the synchronization matrix yielding something called as a latent representation with which the ctm produces outputs and modulates data through cross attention modulated data and and this is also concatenated with the post activations for the next you know internal tick a single step of recurrence of this particular architecture continuous thought machines architecture is shown in this particular video let's look into the video so the video talks about how the ctm unfolds neural activity internally as it thinks about data so at each step what happens is that this is single neuron history of pre activation so here you have your input data which is fed to this single neurons okay synapse model from which you get this history of pre activations so from which you extract the recent pre activations and you give it to a neuronal model a single neuronal model neuron level mo neuron level model okay per neuron from which you get the post activation now you have post activation history you have post activation history from another neuron you synchronize this and you get synchronization okay you get multiple synchronization across these multiple neurons okay now this multiple synchronization across this neuron okay uh, which is the history of post activations produced by all neuron level models over time that are kept and used to compute neuron to neuron synchronization over time the result is this synchronization representation which is a new parameter efficient and evidently powerful representation that the ctm uses to observe via attention and predict your output okay so that is what is shown over here right okay so that is what is explained in this architecture also over here so this video is a single step in its internal recurrent process which is known as an internal tick so the ctm consists of three main ideas the use of internal recurrence enabling a dimension over which a concept analogous to thought can occur the entire process visualized in the video above is a single tick the interactive maze demo at top of the page uses 75 ticks this recurrence is completely decoupled from any data dimensions you have neuron level models uh, that compute post activations by applying private on a per neuron basis mlp models to a history of incoming pre activations then you have the synchronization as a representation where neural activity over time is tracked and used to compute how pairs of neurons synchronize with one another over time this measure of synchronization is the representation with which the ctm takes actions and makes predictions okay so this is how they are introducing this spike level plasticity okay spike timing dependent plasticity or a temporal dimension within your neural network so that is a key idea of this continuous thought machine um so they have explained all about what is this internal tick or thought step okay and then they talk about recurrent weight synapses and all the mathematics relating to you know the all these internal uh, what you call neural network models and other things over here so you can check it out they also have a technical report where they have explained this in detail you can check that out uh, they have various experiments where they have actually done to you know check out how this model works right how does it work with this image net uh, classification problems that is what they have explained over here so the top left is the average attention weighting of 16 head shown where the ctm observes the image on the right class okay uh, observes this particular image and then how it predicts okay that is what they are showing over here they have done other experiments also like solving 2d mazes which we saw in the demo basically uh, in the initial demo which was present okay uh they have done some more experiments on q, q and a mna st okay question answering task so they have done some experiments over there as well right so you can check out further details over here so this is an uh what do you call innovative new neural network architecture i would say 
how this is going to scale up to various problems, how it's going to be better than your traditional neural networks. I think more and more research would bring it out. Uh, you need more research. So this is an initial research, okay, where they've introduced this concept. There could be other ways of also introducing this concept of, you know, continuous thought in a deep neural network or, you know, bringing this complex time dependent patterns of neural activity into neural networks. This is one of the ways. I hope that more future models will come up which are better than your traditional neural networks. So this was a short video, a high level video on continuous thought machines. I would be putting the links to this particular page as well as the paper. Uh, please go and check it out. Hope this video is useful. See you in another video.